Now, this is a really basic construction here. I mean, it's almost like Legos. Uh, what you need is three pots that will fit inside of each other. Fit this way, you go one, two, three. Fit them in nice and pretty. Um, a little word of advice. The smallest pot you can get for the bottom, three, is the best. The smaller the entire apparatus is, the quicker it will charge up from the candle and produce a radiant heat from this, from this ceramic uh, surface. So after you have these three pots, you're going to need a bolt. This is an 8 inch bolt. We measured it in store. We basically just put it in this hole. Went. All right, that's long enough, and that's it. That's all we had to do. Now, obviously, you saw me just pull it out the bottom. So what we need now is a washer, actually a handful. I got five washers in total, and this every single time metal is touching ceramic, you need a washer. It's that simple. So we put the first bowl through, get nice lined up on the bottom, and that's step one. Again, washer. Now, here we have two different sizes of bolts that we're working with. This one is only used to store heat in. Uh, it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't tighten anything. All it does slides on really easily. The first prototype we made of this didn't have nearly enough metal in it. The more metal you have, the more metal there is to get really hot um, from your candle. So, smaller pots, more metal is the key here. So yeah, we put down one big fatty bowl. We'll put down another washer. Make sure it's nice and pretty in there. Set our mala pot in there. Alrighty. Washer. Bolt. Washer. Baby pot. It's almost like anyone can do this. Use the last washer here. Uh, if we just layered them one after another, there wouldn't be enough to keep it tight. So what I'm going to do is do two at the bottom. Um, and a good thing about doing two, the more you can do at the bottom, the better because that's the less you have to twist these things on. These things take forever to twist, and when you get your hand stuffed into this tiny little pot, it can be difficult. Most people use tools. Evolution made a tool for me. Uh, this is the most versatile tool on the planet, the hand, so I'm going to use it. Just a little bit of the flick technique. Now, another thing that I want to uh, caution everyone on is when you take this bolt out of the store, first thing you're going to want to do is take one of your nuts, not these, these are the fat boys, and twist it on all the way down the threads and then all the way back up because sometimes these bolts can have dings in them. And if you have to get past a ding halfway down this bolt, deep inside of one of these pots, it's going to be a huge pain in the ass. All right, get that one nice and tight. They aren't wobbling around. Basically, you just layer them on there. This one, this one. You don't probably think to yourself, man, you are really good at this. Well, this is like the fifth time that I've built this in particular this single pot, built it, and we didn't have any of these fat nuts on it. There was not enough fat nuts in my heater, not nearly enough fat nuts to keep me satisfied. So I had to take the whole thing apart, throw some fat nuts on it. It's pretty simple. Layer them on, one after another. It's like a child's game almost. The flick technique works pretty well. Now that is the construction phase. This thing is ready two buck fifty bricks and those bricks aren't gonna have a problem the bottoms of these pots come with it now uh, it's really simple design that's a one dollar candle underneath that it will burn for fifty hours it takes maybe twenty thirty minutes for this steel core to heat up enough where it's gonna produce temperatures on the surface of this pot on this it barely touches if you set it down, it touches a little bit, but it's good enough. But yeah, that's the candle powered space heater. Maybe $10 for all this, including the bricks and the candle. It's pretty inexpensive and uh, it's hot as f.
in this room, thanks to that thing I'm like.